was thinking long term. You're not always thinking in those uh, down the road, you know, I ideas. Um, I was lucky in the sense that I had a support system. I had a, a, a mom and dad who essentially put the word out. You know, all phone calls came to them. If you called me directly, you're off the list. You're out of the game. Um, and so I didn't have to worry about that. I was able to focus on football. I was able to, you know, focus on being a college kid. And when all that was done, I sat down with a few of the people that uh, my dad had, had narrowed down for me, and then I made the decision myself. I think of for a kid who doesn't have the support system, who wasn't as lucky as I was to be in that situation, having to make these decisions, decisions all on their own in an arena where things have really changed, things have progressed to the point where you're almost trying to trick the kid into, uh, into getting in a situation where they have to come with you. I, it, it's a tough situation for some kids to be in. Okay, we are now in Civil War week. When you were at Oregon, did it feel different? Did the coaches make it different? Or were the coaches trying to make it hey, this is just another week. We just happen to be playing our rivals. As much as you tried to make it the same as every other week, it wasn't. Because there was a certain level of, I don't know how, how quite to describe it. There was different for me because I grew up in the States. I knew what the Civil War was about. I had friends who were at Oregon State. My family went to University of Oregon. Um, you know, there was that personal tie for me. And even the kids who come from California and Texas and, and out of state, if you're around it long enough, you start to feel it. You start to feel the rivalry. So even if the coach is trying to downplay it, this is just another week, you're still hearing the fight songs. You know, you're still hearing the kids on campus talking about beating the Beavers. It's something that people talk about all year. The games were always for something meaningful. You know, in 2000, the winner, you know, essentially shared the Pac-10 championship. In 2001, uh, we thought it was going to get us into the national championship, but we were a little bit short. But it got us into into the Fiesta Bowl and, and a and a, uh, a loan or a, a standalone Pac-10 championship. So uh, there was always something very meaningful for me. Well, speaking of meaningful, I don't think it's uh, you know we can minimize the impact of this week's game. I mean, this could be the biggest game ever in Oregon football history. I think it is playing to go to the national title. When you watch the Arizona game, you watch Nick Foles put up 448 yards passing, a lot of separation with the wide receivers and the DBs of Oregon. Does that give you any reason for concern? Are you concerned at all about what's going to happen on Saturday? I've been concerned about what's going to happen on Saturday all year. I mean, this is the game that I've had on, had circled on my calendar. I didn't think that the Beavers were going to stumble like they did mid-season. After their early two losses to TCU and Boise, I thought this was a team that was going to be 8-3 coming into this into this civil war. That being said, watching how they've played throughout the season, uh, Katz has been good at times, but he's been very inconsistent. He's had uh, a game, you know, a couple games, like the one against Arizona, where he threw for 350 and almost 400 yards. Looked fantastic. But then there's times when he's looked really average. He's looked a little bit rattled. Uh, that may have to do with the loss of James Rogers early in the season. That may have, have to do with Know, the inconsistent offensive line play. I don't see the, the passing attack of Oregon State being the equivalent of, of, of Arizona last week. However, I think their, their running back, uh, Jaquiz Rogers, is head and shoulders above anything that Arizona had. And, and that's really what scares me. Here's, here's my final question for you. Chip Kelly in two years, he's now 21-3. and three. Um, It seems like he has taken the program to another level. I mean, where Mike Bellotti had it pretty high, it's at a completely different level. Um, had, did, did you ever see this coming where Oregon would be playing for the national title? And I don't see them slowing down because essentially he's kind of playing with Mike's recruits, isn't he? Well, I, I will say that the success that they've had of late, um, you know, being ranked number one is, and it hasn't happened before. I mean, it, it, it's, it's something brand new. The University of Oregon program right now at this moment may be on a, on a different level than it ever has been. However, there was a streak there when uh, when I was there with guys like Justin Peel and Maurice Morris and Keenan Howry, where we were 27-3 and three over 30 games, going back midway through our sophomore year to the end of our senior year. And then you had the six games next uh, that they won to start the next year uh, with Jason Fife. Um, you know, so that's 33-3. That's and three. So this type of, this stretch has happened before. It hasn't happened in the sense that they went to the Rose Bowl last year, um, and now they're playing for a possible national championship this year. So... I think the stakes have been upped a little bit more, which makes this streak a little bit more visible, and the fact that it's happened at the very beginning of Coach Kelly's tenure. I mean, this is right out of the gates. You know, you 
take your team to the Rose Bowl in the first year and take your team you know, to a possible national championship in your second year, that's what's really remarkable uh, about what Coach, what Coach Kelly has done. Right. Joe, thanks for dropping.